Shemalo Israel, Shalom, Ami Bez Saris Davi, and my Isha Baki is here with us as well. And before we go any further, we'll have the opening song in which we don't own the rights to our Pledge of Allegiance, and then a song by Sister Kiki in that order. Sister Kiki. We are one in the Ruach, we are one in El. We are one in the Ruach, we are one in El. And we pray that our unity will one day be restored and they'll know. We are Israel by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Israel by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that Yah is in our land. And they'll know we are Israel by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Israel by our love. Hallelujah. Our first scripture this evening is from Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7. It is written, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Hallelujah. Our next scripture this evening is from Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. It is written, 
He that turns away his ear from hearing Torah, even his prayer shall be abomination. Hallelujah. Our next scripture is our Torah portion from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. It is written, And El spake all these words, saying, I am Yahda El, which have brought thee forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other El before me. You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh El, am a jealous El. Visit then the iniquity of the Abbas upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh El in vain, for Yah will not hold them guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh El. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your son nor your daughter, thy man Ebed, thy maid Ebed, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yah made heaven and earth to see, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy Abba and thy Amma, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yah thy El gives thee. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You shall not lust after thy neighbor's house. You shall not lust after thy neighbor's Isha, nor his man he bed, nor his maid he bed, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to enter into prayer, and I'm going to kneel and face his holy oracle and spread forth my hands. I ask that those who are joining us, please, by all means, um, find which direction Jerusalem is in your house and start facing that holy oracle, spreading forth your hands. It will make a difference in your prayer life. Father Yah, as we spread forth our hands unto thee, we come humbly but boldly before your throne of mercy and grace, praising you and thanking you, Father, for how you kept us, Father, thus far during the week, during the course of this day, and bringing us in safely, Father. Praise and thank you, Father, for allowing us, Father, to another time to gather in your name and to seek forgiveness of our sins. As we invoke your name, your Ruach, and your word, we ask that you would be with us from Daniel chapter 9, verses 4 through 19, and accept it on, our per on behalf of our persons. The writer wrote, O Yah, the great and dreadful El, keeping a covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy ebes, the Narvis, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and to our abbas, and to all the people of the land. O Yah, lawfulness belongs unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces at this day. To the men of Yehuda, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries where thou hast driven them, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Yah, to us belong confusion of face to our kings, our princes, and to our Abbas, because we have sinned against thee. To Yah, our El, belongs mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against them. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yah, our El, to walk in his Torah, which he set before us by his Ebeds, the Narvis. Yea, O Israel, have transgressed thy Torah even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in 
the Torah of Moshe the Ebed El, because we have sinned against you, Yah, and you have confirmed your words which you spake against us and against our judges that judged us. By bringing upon us a great evil, for that the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem, as it is written in the Torah of Moshe, all these evils come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before Yah El that we might turn from our iniquities and understand Yah's truth. Therefore have Yah watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For Yah El is lawful in all his works which he do, for we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Yah our El, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Mitrian with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned as at this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Yah, according to all thy lawfulness, we beseech thee, let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our others, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our El, hear the prayers of we thy ebeds in these supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for your sake. O our El, incline thy ear, and hear, open thy eyes, and behold our desolations in the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our lawfulnesses, but for thy great mercies. O Yah, hear, O Yah, forgive, O Yah, hearken, and do defer not for thy own sake, O our El, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. We ask, Father, that you would move mercifully and mightily as we invite you in the midst of this time, Father. We ask, Father, that you would transform me and my Isha into instruments of thy will and thy purpose. We ask, Father, that you would move mercifully and mightily, Father, from person to person and home to home because you're welcome here, Father. We ask, Father, that you will hear our cry from Psalm 143, the Ebed's prayer that says, Shema, I pray, O Yah, give ear to our supplications and our faithfulness, answer us, and in our lawfulness. And to not end the judgments with we, thy Ebed's, for in thy sight shall no man live and be justified. For the enemy have persecuted our souls, it has smitten our lives down to the ground. It has made us to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is our walk overwhelmed within us. Our hearts within us is desolate. We remember the days of old. We meditate on all thy works. We muse on the work of thy hands. We stretch forth our hands unto thee. Our souls thirst after thee as a thirsty land, Selah. Hear us speedily, O Yah, who walks fair. Hide not thy face from us, lest we be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause us to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do we trust. Cause us to know the way wherein we should walk, for we lift up our souls unto thee. Deliver us, O Yah, from our enemies. We flee unto thee to hide us. Teach us to do thy will, for thou art our El, thy Ruach is good. Lead us into the land of uprightness. Quicken us, O Yah, for thy name's sake. For thy lawfulness sake, bring our souls out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off our enemies and destroy all them that afflict our souls, for we are thy ebeds. We need you now, Father, as we spread forth our hand, Father. You're invited here and into each home, and we ask that you will empower us, Father, according to your election and purpose. We ask, Father, that you would create in us a do-right heart and a do-right mind and unite our hearts to fear thy name. We ask, Father, that you would allow us to add to our faith those things talked about in 2 Kepha chapter 1, Father. We ask that you would even hear today's psalm on our behalf, Father. Y'all hear us in the day of trouble, the name of the mighty one of your cool defenders. Send us help from the sanctuary and strengthen us out of Zion. Remember all our burnt offerings and accept our burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant us according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy counsels. We will rejoice in Yeshua and in, in, in the name of our Elohim we will set up our banners. Yah fulfill all our petitions. Now know we that Yah saves his anointing. He will hear us from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, 
but we will remember the name of Yahweh. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save Yah, let the king hear us when we call. We ask, Father, that you not only hear us, but move, Father, mercifully and mightily on our behalf. And we ask, Father, for those who are hearers and doers of your covenant, Father, show distinction in their lives because they are obedient to your word, Father. We ask that you will move mercifully and mightily on behalf of the obedient to your covenant, Father. Those who hear and do, Father, the hearkeners, we ask this right now, Father, that you would just get the glory, the praise, and the honor. We ask this in Yeshua name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise and thank the Most High for allowing us to gather in his uh -huh. name one more time. I don't know about you, but it's been a, 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 a war during the course of this week, but nonetheless, the Most High deemed us and counted us worthy to go through the trials and tribulations in which we went through. So I do praise and thank him for all that he's saying, all that he's doing, and how he's moving in our lives. Some of you all that's joined us, um, if you're serious about prayer, by all means, inbox us, because we do have a group that meets on Dua two times a day. We used to meet three times. That third prayer should be up to that individual to make, you know, in their secret prayer closet. Of course, you don't have to pray with us. We don't have no monopoly on prayer, but we are definitely in a position or a place where we actually are exercising our faith and we have praise reports from people who have been blessed. And what we've been going through in prayer uh, 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 actually is part of what we've been on the last few weeks, the last few sessions, dealing with faith and who's, uh, uh, who's uh, uh, your faith is in, you know? Whose faith is going to heal you? Whose faith is going to deliver you? I just hope and pray that we as the people of the Most High take time out and go through some of these uh, exhortations that we have because you'll find out some things that you thought you knew uh, aren't really so, but you'll actually get, to get that out of your life and get scripture in your life. So I do praise and thank the Most High in the midst of it all for all he says all he's doing. I hope and pray everyone is okay in this scriptural second month for those who follow scripture. You know, from new moon to new moon, it's the second month. I understand some are in their first month going into their first Passover. I don't care what month you do the Passover. Just do it. Keep them commandments of the Most High. But over here where we're at, we're hearers and doers of his word. We're not just willy-nilly fly by night. Uh, we're going to freestyle this one, you know, off the top of our heads and throw your hands in it. Nah, uh-uh, we ain't doing that one, all right? <laughs> we don't do that one. If it ain't written, it ain't so. And I would like to ask some of you all that uh, uh, joins us regularly and, and uh, sit in other houses, uh, places of worship, and all of that, that's fine, that's cool. But ask your leadership, how do they derive at the answers that they come up with for when Abib and Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread is? All right? Ask them how they do that calculation. And when you ask them, ask them to walk you like you're a one-year-old through Scripture. Not their talk, not their literature. Scripture, all right? And you'll find out it's a great difference there as well. I understand many have different versions of the Holy Scriptures. Some got a King James Version. Some got this version. Some got that version. And all of them don't read the same. But if you ever got a discrepancy in the back of the book, in the middle of the book, or in those uh, uh, hidden books called the Apocrypha, always take it back to the source, all right? And this will 
aid you in rightly dividing the word of truth as the Most High allows you to do so. Last time we was together, we was talking about uh, uh, that shield of faith. How that word shield in uh, uh, the scriptural Greek actually meant door, gateway, you know. But in the scriptural Hebrew up front in Torah and Tanakh, that word shield literally means to either be scaly or prickly. Either way, when the Most High shields you according to Torah and Tanakh, he makes you hard to deal with. You ever try to deal with a rose? You got to be careful how you deal with it. You know? You ever picked up a porcupine? Most people can or haven't. Or won't even try. You got to be careful how you deal with certain things when the Most High shields you. It's very important that we stay in Scripture during these days and times because... We're definitely in a trying time, a very trifling time, whereas we're going to actually have to exercise our faith. We're going to have to put some work to our faith. If we're definitely having our faith in the Most High, then everything that's flying by you during the day and trying to pestilence, trying to creep up on you, and this happening, that happening, that shouldn't move you. And the only ones that are moved are the ones that have their faith in man. Alright? And I hope and pray that we as his children can find our way back to the scripture. We even went through the profile of a reprobate in Romans chapter 1. Check out verses 28 to 32. It's like uh, 23, 24 things. And just those four verses that talk about the mindset or the, uh, uh, the mind of a reprobate and all of what a reprobate does. So that you don't get into senseless or needless arguments and disputes over the word by some people with some people whom the Most High already delivered them <laughs> over to a reprobate mind. Alright? Alright? Very important people. That we be mindful as hearers and doers of his word that we bring the thing, all everything back to the word. Because at the end of the day, Revelation 12, 17, 14, 12, and 22, 14 all talk about the keeping of his word, the commandments. All right? Very important that we be mindful of that. Some of us are going through some things right now. All that is, is your faith given birth to the things that need to be added to the faith if you're truly a covenant keeper. So don't think that the Most High fell off his throne. He don't hear your prayer. No, these are just growing pains, all right? We go from glory to glory, faith to faith, and strength to strength, all right? Very important that we be mindful of that as we look to the Most High to lead and guide us into all truths during these trifling times in which we live. Alright? We're not going to be long tonight. <laughs> we only got 2,000 verses. No, I'm just messing. Um, I do want to hit this one spot from when we, where we left off. Alright? I want to let's go back into Matthew chapter 17 and remember the title or, or the theme here is based upon whose faith is going to make you whole. Alright? We're dealing with Messiah in many different events. Last time we was together, Matthew 9, verse 22 said, you know, the woman's faith made her whole. Alright, down in uh, Matthew 9, 29, the Most High said, according to your faith, your faith, not faith in him, but your faith, so be it unto you. And then in Matthew 15, 28, Messiah got to talking about how, uh, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee. Very important that we understand this because... A lot of things are going to happen at the drop of a dime 
uh, uh, powers that that be may cut the the power off to this. Now, how much word do you have in you to survive until the lights come back on? Are you able to get a prayer not only through but heard and answered and actually uh, 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 in microwave time and take faith, prayer, fasting, praise, worship, their muscles that got to be built, you know, and you build that muscle through actual application or use of the word going through trial and error. You know, that's how your faith is built. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 17. Verse 1 states, And after six days, Yeshua taketh Cephas, Yaakov, Yohanan, his eye, and bring them up into a high mountain apart. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moshe and Elias talking with him. Then answered Kepha and said unto Yeshua, Master, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. One for thee, one for Moshe, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. Man, I had run. <laughs> <laughs> and Yeshua came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Yeshua only. And as they came down from the mount, Yeshua charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, Matthew chapter 17, verse 10, And his disciples asked him, saying, when they say the scribes and Eliya must first come. And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Eliya truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Eliya has come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of Johannan the Immerser. Matthew 17, verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there come, came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Master, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic. <laughs> and sore vexed, for oftentimes he fall into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Yeshua answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Yeshua rebuked Hashatan, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Yeshua apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Yeshua said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for truly I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence beyond the place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Verse 21, How be it, this kind not goes not out but by prayer and fasting. And while they are born in Galilee, Yeshua said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Kepha and said, 
do not your master pay true tribute? He says yes, and when he was coming to the house, Yeshua prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Kepha said unto him, Of strangers. Yeshua said unto him, Then are the children free? Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, cast the hook, Take up the fish that first comes up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money <laughs> that take and give unto them for me and thee. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like this chapter. This chapter speaks on some things. We're dealing with transfiguration right now, and hopefully the Ruach will transform some people's minds and their thinking from glory to glory, faith to faith, and strength to strength. As we look at this story, I look at this story and I see here in verse uh, 14, it says, When they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Master, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic. And sore vexed, for oft times he falls into the fire, and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Yeshua answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How sh long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Yeshua rebuked Hashatan. And he departed out of him, and the child was cured that very hour. Then came the disciples to Yeshua apart. So they pulled him aside and said, Why could not we cast them out? And Yeshua said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Somewhere along the line in Israel, y'all, we got to get belief back in these scriptures. All right? We have been so far and removed on the mindset of the Most High from the scriptural standpoint that now we conjure up every whim of doctrine uh, as to when uh, uh, we are to keep his holy days or we should not keep his holy days. Okay? Let's get back into scripture and start believing scripture. All right? A lot of people is still dealing with unbelief on the believing of the very thing that Israel was made or, or, or the substance of Israel is that covenant that we just read in uh, Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 17. And this is when we as his children really need to get back to the 101s of this thing. All right? I ain't trying to beat nobody over the head, talk about nobody's place of worship, talk about nobody at all. But we as his children need to get back to his word. Because here in Matthew 17, 20, he said, because of your unbelief, many of us are supposed to be walking even further in these signs that these signs shall follow them that believe. But because of unbelief, you, you, if you was to take every place of worship right now in these United States and Israel, uh, that claim they, they, they Israel, claim that they're tour keepers and all of that, and start running down the road to some of them, some of them will cuss you out until you get away from them because you sounding like church. Now, nah, church perverted what we had. The Most High's house is a house of prayer for all people. All right, Shlomo prayed. We opened it up with Daniel's prayer. David prayed a mere prayer. We read Psalm 143 and Psalm 20. It's very important for us to get back out of the strange customs of the heathen and get back to the word so that we're able to do those things that we read about in the word when you're supposed to literally uh, 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 be 
be able to heal someone. You know? I understand that, yeah, we're reading this according to their faith, but somebody got to be the spark, that blue spark to get the thing ignited and going. Some don't even have the ruah. And this is where a lot of the problems come in. You know, because if you're not being immersed in Yeshua HaMashiach name for remission of sins, how can you receive the Ruach? And this is why you got every whim of doctrine because, again, a lot of Israel say that, oh, that's has been, uh, uh, that's churchianity, ain't nothing about that in Torah. I beg to differ. I can walk you from Torah through the Tanakh to the back of the book how the most high use water for consecration and preparation for his people. Very important that we understand this. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20 says, And Yeshua said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for truly I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, Ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove thence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Very important that we understand that the Most High wants us to have our faith in Him. Now don't forget we went through this. Faith in Torah, one time. Faith in the Tanakh, one time. So that's two in the front of the book. Now we're dealing with faith here in verse 20. And this word faith is, again, the scriptural Greek word, pistis. Entry number 4102. And this word faith means you got to have persuasion, credence, and conviction. And you got to be convinced in yourself. It ain't nothing about convincing somebody else. You got to have um, that convincing uh, 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 conviction in you where you're convinced. Where you got to have that persuasion in you that you're, you're persuaded that no matter what goes on around me, the Most High is going to bring me through this. You don't know how many times a day I pray, Father, remember your covenant that you have with your son Darby and don't forget this son Darby. Huh? I ain't saying I am the Darby. No. I am a son Darby. It's very important that we as people take a look at our faith. Don't forget faith work by love. Alright? So some of you all may not understand <laughs> Why is scripture I'll tell you quick? Agree with thy adversary quickly while thou is in the way with them. Because when you do that, you don't uh, 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 give place to the adversary. You don't give place to nothing to come in to hinder you or your blessing. All right? A lot of people is not understanding that a lot of things that we're sowing out of our mouths because we don't have that virtue and that brotherly love and 2 Peter chapter 1 that we supposed to add to our faith because we don't have that our faith is like stagnant you know it is one of those things where it's, we as his children got to figure out what are we saying what are we doing all right what are we saying what are we doing it's very important that we ask ourselves this so that we as his children can show the distinction that the Most High has blessed us to be able to uh, uh, have and live for. You know? Okay. It's very important that we continue to move according to the Most High's election and purpose. And Messiah said unto him, If you have faith of a, as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence the yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Verse 21. If you're using an NIV Bible, verse 21 is not in your Bible. You can notice 
It skipped from verse 20 to verse 22. So it's something in verse 21 that Hashatan don't want people to take a look at. All right? Verse 21 is key and critical because it says, How be it? This kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. And our prayer group today uh, at our 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time session, the Ruach led me to let them know. We're, we're getting into an area now where some of us need to fast to be able to build our faith and unlock some things within us. Let's take a look at this uh, 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 instance of fasting based on Matthew 17, verse 21. If you are um, still with me, keep your finger there and let's go over to Luke chapter 4. I like this because Luke chapter 4 is one of those instances on fasting that a lot of people uh, don't aren't privy to hearing or listening to, you know, or even receiving the point of it. Check out, uh, and I'm going to go from verse 1 through, I guess, verse 16. Yeah. Verse 1, and I'm going verse by verse, and I'm explaining. So, you know, we know faith come out here and they hear by the word, but I want to amplify a few points for you. Verse 1 in Luke chapter 4 says, In Yeshua, being full of the Ruach. Notice that it said he was being full of the Ruach. Returned from Jordan and was led by the Ruach into the wilderness. Two key critical things. Messiah was filled with the Ruach and was led by the Ruach. All right? Some of you all's faith ain't taking you down certain corridors or certain uh, uh, areas of life because uh, uh, you're, you're, you're stagnant. You don't have the Ruach. Here it says he was full of the Ruach and led by the Ruach. You want to see the functions of the Ruach? Check out. Yohanan chapter 14 and 15. Alright. Luke 4 verse 2 says. Being 40 days tempted of Hashitan. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended. He afterward hungered. And Hashitan said unto him. If thou be the son of Elohim. Command this stone that it be made bread. And Yeshua answered him saying. Those are my three favorite words right there. It is written. It is written. It is written. Get used to saying that. Only people that can say it is written is those who read what's written. <laughs> right? Some of you all are... are Hanging on every word of a lot of these hirelings' mouths. Casting your good seed to swine. Wonder why you always struggling. Wonder why you can't catch a break. Wondering this, wondering that. How much word are you going to actually put on Hashitan when he's before you? When all you know is a whole bunch of religious slaying sayings and Morally good slogans and things of that nature. You notice how verse 2 says, Being 40 days tempted of Hashatan. Alright? He was 40 days tempted, and those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Verse 3 says, and Hashatan said unto him, If thou be, if, you got to listen. One thing about a, a, a prayer, a fasting life, a praise, a worship life, a life of inviting the Ruach into your life, 
You're literally asking the Most High to take control, to give you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, discretion, character, and integrity. That's what you're asking him to do because now Messiah is listening to Hashatan and his words are saying, if thou be, if. You got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt who you are and where your faith is located. Okay? You got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. What's going on? Nothing. Oh. It's very important that we as the children of the Most High know where, where and who our faith is in. A lot of people got you believing in them, but you can't go to the Hashatan and say, so-and-so said this. That was tried in the back of the book. The sons of Sceva tried to call themselves rebuking a foul spirit, and that foul spirit tore them up. We got to figure out who we going to put our faith in. Because down here in verse 3 in Luke 4 it says, If thou be the son of El, command this stone that it be made bread. And Yeshua answered him saying, my favorite words, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of Elohim. Very important that we figure out and find out what we say and what we're doing. How we moving? Now, if man shall live by a uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of Elohim. Then some of you all really, really, really are in trouble because you got a lot of literature coming from your leadership that can't show you scripture as to why a lot of things are going on in your place of worship. Luke four verse five says. And Hashatan taking them up to a high mountain. Just like Messiah took a, a, a Kepha and them up to a high mountain. Showed unto them all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And Hashatan said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be by. It's a man who haven't eaten in 40 days and 40 nights. And he was already out in being tempted. 40 days and 40 nights. That's what the scripture said in verse 1. Verse 2. Being 40 days tempted of Hashatan. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So, between him not eating for 40 days and 40 nights, and then between him uh, 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 being tempted of Hashatan, going through all of that, it said there that he afterward hungered. <laughs> Wonder what kind of meal he had. But he had faith that his last meal would carry him through. Alright? So, we read in here, in verse 7, that if thou therefore will worship me, Hashatan is saying to Messiah, all shall be thine. And Messiah answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Hashatan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yah thy El, and him only shall thou serve. If you don't know the word, the sword of the spirit, if you don't know the sword of the spirit, how are you going to fight the evil one, the wicked one, when he come upon you? Please, some of you all are still getting paid good money to sit home. And I, I would advise you to revisit a lot of things in the Bible that you've heard over the years. Come to find out when you read them now with clear eyes, them things ain't even in the scripture. A lot of that stuff. All right? It went on to say in Luke chapter 4, uh, verse 9, And Hashatan brought Messiah 
till Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou, here we go, if thou, if, 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 you got to know who you are. If thou be the son of Elohim, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, now Hashatan is trying to tell him, it is written. Alright? So just, just know, alright? The uh, 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 word made flesh literally was trying to, uh, was uh, uh, being bombarded by Hashatan using quote unquote the word. Verse 8 says, Get thee behind me, Hashatan, for it is written, You shall worship Yahweh and him only. Shall thou serve that he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, said unto him, If thou be the son of El, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest, lest at any time you dash thy foot against the stone. Now watch Yeshua response in verse 12 in Luke 4. And Yeshua answering said unto him, It is said, you shall not tempt Yah thy El. Alright? We as the people of the Most High gotta learn that in this exchange, Yohanan in the back of the book how about there are only three sins common to men how about the lust of the eye the lust of the flesh and pride of life these are the same three that the first man fell victim to in the garden alright verse 13 says and when Hashatan had ended all the temptation he departed from him for a season Young warriors, I'm, I'm encourage you right now. As you're going through life, going through things in life, you know, hold on. Fight with every ounce in you. Start turning up the praise. Start turning up the worship for the Most High. Start turning down some plates. You start turning down plates. Uh, uh, Hashatana, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, looking, trying to figure out what's really going on here. Alright? Look at this in 13. Alright? The psalmist said, Weeping may endure for the night, but Simca, joy, she come in the morning. So if you endure, you gotta endure. The Most High will make a way of escape. Or, or pull the evil one off of you. But you gotta endure. Because faith without works is dead. It goes on to say. I like verse 14. It says in verse 14. And Yeshua returned in the power of the Ruach. Into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him. Throughout all the region round about. Alright. 14. Says he returned in the power. Verse 1 says he was full of the Ruach and led by the Ruach. So what's the operative thing here? You need the Ruach. How you get the Ruach? By being immersed in Yeshua HaMashiach name for remission of sins. Anybody need help getting in the water? Let us know. You need help understanding the scriptures from Torah through Tanakh to the Brihadesh, the back of the book, on the water immersion, let us know. Alright? Verse 15 says, He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, everybody see that word? Them four words? As his custom was. Was now why do churchianity scream? I want to be like Jesus, I want to be like Jesus. Oh, how I long to be like Jesus, so high and more holy, so meek and lonely. Oh, I want to be like him. Why they on the first day of Messiah was on uh, uh, the seventh day, as his custom was. 
He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. We got to figure out what we're saying and doing, people. I mean, I can teach, show you the seventh day from the, the back of the book. You know? When you read the synoptic evangels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're going to hear stuff like, and the feast of the Yahudim was at hand. And the feast of the Passover of the Yahudim was at hand. And the feast of weeks was at hand. And then you read in the book of Acts, you still seeing the word Sabbath and uh, feast days. Then you read in Paul, who everybody lying on in churchianity, oh, he was nailed to the tree. Ha! Nah, man. Because uh, 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 the apostle Shaul said keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, but with the leaven of sincerity and truth. But it was all nailed to the tree. Alright? If you don't have a ruach, this, this, this Bible will make you sound schizophrenic. You got multiple personalities. <laughs> you got personality disorders and everything. If you don't have a ruach. We see in verse 16 where he was on the Sabbath day. All right. It's very important that we understand that during this fast, verse 1 in Luke 4 says, Yeshua being full of the Ruach, returned, full of the Ruach, returned from Jordan and was led by the Ruach into the wilderness. 14 says, And Yeshua returned into the power of the Ruach into Galilee. He was full of the Ruach, led by the Ruach, and returned in the power of the Ruach. How do you think this happened? It says he, in verse 2, being 40 days tempted of Hashem and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they ended, he afterward hungered. Somewhere along the line, Yeshua might have remembered Isaiah chapter 58. Let's pop there for, for a moment. We're going to go back to Matthew 17, but we're going to go to Isaiah 58 right quick. Isaiah 58 speaks volumes to Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. This is where you get the understanding of this man being full of the Ruach, led by the Ruach. And returned in the power of the Ruach. Somewhere along the line, Messiah had to fulfill this chapter in Isaiah 58. Because when we read it, you're going to hear some things. 1 through 5 is going to speak in one way. And 6 through 14 is going to speak in a whole nother way. Listen to this. Isaiah 58 verse 1. Cry out, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Yakub their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did lawfulness, and forsook not the ordinance of their Elohim. They ask of me the ordinances of justice, they take the light in approaching to Elohim, Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fists of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is this such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to Yah? Verse 6 says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? 
to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou see the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy help shall spring forth speedily. Thy lawfulness shall go before thee. The glory of Yah shall be thy re reward. Then shall thou call, and Yah shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and Yah shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speak in vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And Yah shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul and draw, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, uh-oh, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of Yah honorable and shall honor him not doing thine own ways nor finding thine own pleasure nor speaking thine own words then shall thou delight thyself in Yah and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, earth and feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov thy Abba for the mouth of Yah hath spoken thee Verses 1 through 5 talked about Israel then, like Israel now, <laughs> trying to do things their own way and not the way it was ascribed or prescribed for them to do. And that's where the problem came in, in Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 through 5. That's why probably Messiah fasted the way he did in Luke chapter 4 and in Matthew chapter 4 as well. But we see in verses 6 through 14, it's a lot of things going on in here. The first one, is not this the fast that I have chosen. Alright, the Most High has chosen the fast. One, to loose the bands of wickedness. Two, to undo the heavy burdens. Three, then to let the oppressed go free. Now this fourth thing in verse six, it goes from the Most High, now it's talking to you. Now you break every yoke. It's very important that we as his people take a look at this chapter wholeheartedly and very seriously because by the time you finish writing down all the things from verses 6 to 14, I got the most high doing 22 things and we had to do 18. All right? Very important, people. We be mindful of what we saying, what we doing, and how we moving as we call ourselves children of the light. And this is how you rightly divide the word of truth. Just like we've been saying it all along. Some of you all want to understand how to deal with these holy days. Isaiah 66, 23 tell you from one new moon to another. One Sabbath to another. So if one new moon to another is a period of time and one Sabbath to another is a period of time, then... We look at 1 Chronicles 27, 1 through 15, we see a captain and a team for every new moon, every new month. There ain't no stopping your time, there ain't no stopping, wait for this and wait for that. But still, 
You're gonna got gonna have to get like three or four pieces of paper. One side of one, write down the word of B. On the back side of a B, put Passover. Take the other paper at the top of that. Put the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Take the other paper. Put it on top of that. The Feast of the Weeks. Take the other another paper on one side. Put down uh what is that? Yom Torah, Yom Atonement, and then also the Feast of the Tabernacles. And then you go into Exodus chapter 12, ex, uh, Leviticus 23, Numbers chapter 9, and Deuteronomy 16, and start writing down everything that is said to be done for that time. If it's a bee, it says you got to observe the new moon of a bee. Well, before the new moon was observed, people was hollering about Happy New Year. They already had their Passover day. See what I'm saying? It's making me wonder, Israel, who are we going to believe, who are we going to listen to? Remember now, back here in Matthew 17, let's go back to there. Verse 20 said, because of your unbelief. That's why you wasn't able to cast that spirit out. Some of us have been holding on to spirits of churchianity because they left churchianity, came into some structure or form of what they thought was truth, carried those old bones, those spirits from churchianity with you into an environment you don't even know if you're getting truth. And I'm talking about truth as far as having it established like Moshe. Messiah and the Apostle Shaul said in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Don't come talking to me about Psalm 80 and how the sun and the moon is for seasons and all of this and that. One scripture. One scripture, but still I never saw nothing in Torah with Moshe about him having to receive a, 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 a scripture that says uh, you do this and you do that. Moshe was the receiver of our covenant to give to Israel. It's very important. If our faith come by hearing and hearing by the word, it's very important for us to get back into the word. Very important. I'm speaking in love. I ain't trashing nobody. I ain't dragging nobody. Or nothing. Israel. We got to figure out what we saying and what we doing. And we also got to separate and, and we also got to remember that we got to have distinction amongst ourselves from the world. Some of you all may not understand, but we read the story of Yehoshua and Caleb because they spoke faith. They spoke that which was right. They was able to enter into a promised land that Moshe couldn't even go into. Huh? It's very important that we be mindful of these things. I hope and pray at this time that this on faith is being encouragement to you. You know, um, I pray that we all understand that somewhere along the line, we're going to have to fast to tap into that power. Remember Luke 4 verse 1. It was full of the Ruach and led by the Ruach. If you know you haven't been immersed in Yeshua HaMashiach, a uh, name for remission of sins, then I mean like, how you, <laughs> you going to do this without the Ruach? You need water. It's very important that we be mindful, extremely mindful of how we take people's names into our mouths. Be extremely mindful that we are not idol makers. Some of you all have turned some of these uh, 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 false prophets and hirelings into idols. Yes, you have. Graven images. You believe them quicker than what the words say. 
And that's the sad and scary part. And that's the part where it's a lot of people is going to end up on the wrong side or on the bad side of judgment. Because as one soweth, so shall they reap it. And as the Most High is nearing to send Messiah to come, it's very important that we get our affairs in order. We get our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and our souls in order. Let's pray. Father Yah, as we kneel before thy throne of mercy and grace, we spread forth our hands unto thee, asking, Father, that you would stir up, Father, fasting and praying within us. Stir up, Father, praise and worship unto thee within us. Stir up, Father, obedience and a do-right heart and a do-right mind in us. Unite our hearts to fear thy name, Father. We ask, Father, I ask this for me because I'm about your business. I ask, Father, that you would continue to allow even more signs to follow me and my household because we believe, Father. We're ready and willing to do your work. Praise and thank you that you have blessed me, Father, to not be chargeable to any man for a salary. I praise you, Father, for that. And I ask, Father, even more as I endeavor to do your work. You carry not only me, but my Isha as well. And anybody else that want to do your work, you carry them from glory to glory, faith to faith and strength to strength. We ask this this day. In Yeshua name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will be blessed. You will be safe. May the Most High continue to bless God and keep you till we meet again. And again, I ask anybody want to join us on duo for prayer or oh, in this structured prayer as well. It's not one of them type of environments that everybody get the call on their own Elohim. Nah, we got structure over there. If you pull in a name from Genesis chapter 1 from the scriptural Hebrew and calling on them, that's fine. But anything that we ain't supposed to have in our mouth according to Exodus 23, 13, somebody will let you know quick. Whoa, 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 hold up. <laughs> you all be blessed and be safe. Shalom, everyone.